welcome back my friends thank you so much for tuning in this is silver slayer so now let's talk silver folks i want to ask you a question how much silver should you own now this is a very loose question it depends upon each stacker everyone has different financial situations uh, people have less or more experience some people just started some people have been stacking for 30 40 years there, there's so many variables i don't know your selling time frame but we all have to think about this we have to have an end goal strategy is your goal a thousand ounces also think about how long until you're going to sell is it five years? Is it 20 years? Is it never? What price are you going to sell at? Are you going to throw in the towel and say, you know what? Silver is $200. I'm going to sell. Also, what price are you going to throw in the towel and say, you know what? Silver is too pricey. I'm not going to buy anymore. Have you thought about any of this? Because if you haven't, then you should. And hopefully this video will be extremely helpful to those people. Now, I didn't want to just share one article. I chose six because this is such a loose question. I wanted to do a little bit of digging and show six different articles, actually seven. We'll go over this last one, um, but seven different articles talking about this. So hopefully we get a better idea instead of just one person's perspective, writing an article for a website. But I still think this would be much more beneficial if you all in the comment section answered this question as well and explained why this question or, or this video actually started from someone who commented on my latest video and said is 600 ounces enough silver and this is what i replied i said that is a very nice stack but if you can still afford to buy silver then why not since it's still extremely undervalued then why not take advantage of these lower prices if you still can afford to if not, then, you know, 600 ounces, that's great. We're going to go over some of these types of discussions throughout this video because you also have to remember, let's say someone is washing dishes, a, a guy that just started college and he's making minimum wage. His goal, his strategy isn't going to be someone com compared to someone who's 60 years old, about to retire, has a much more stable financial situation. You know, so that the guy that's working at, you know, whatever, Bob Evans or McDonald's isn't going to have the same type of goal as someone who has been stacking for years or has a much different financial situation. So there is no wrong answer to this. It depends upon yourself. And that's another reason why I wanted to bring this to the table is because everyone even if you just started stacking or even stacking for 40 years can really reflect upon this. So let's jump into this. How much silver should I own or should you own? Now, a lot of these articles are longer, so I'm just going to share the meat and potatoes of each. This one says five to 10 percent. However, it's essential to note that this is just a general guideline and the ideal allocation for you may be different. And that's what I was talking about before. It, it fluctuates between person to person. Now, silver investing during a financial crisis. During a financial crisis, the value of traditional investments such as stocks, bonds, and real estate can experience significant declines. In such cases, many investors turn to safe havens like precious metals, including in silver, uh, as a way to protect their wealth and preserve purchasing power, of course. I'm not going to explain why, you know, um, but... They go down down here. It says a general guideline is for silver to be part of the five to ten percent a portion to precious metals, including gold, in an in investment portfolio. It's important to consider investing on a case by case basis as well as the macro economic environment. And I like how they said macro, not the micro, the bigger picture at play. But the case for silver is looking stronger now than it has done for many years. And this was written in. Only a couple months ago, you know, 2023. Um, so that's what I mean. Five to ten percent for most silver stackers. We, it's much higher than that. We really don't like stocks or anything pegged to the dollar. We like putting ourselves in a position where we are in complete control of our wealth. When you take your fake money and put it into real money, you have taken the the power away from the government. 
who could seize or freeze your bank accounts like like we've seen with some some people or let's say the dollar collapses completely or banks fail when you have your money in precious metals you are protected against those types of situations you're not at the mercy of the federal reserve so five to ten percent is low in my opinion but if you're someone who maybe has a lot of different assets in their portfolio um, then maybe that's great especially if you think about how much five or ten percent or five to ten percent could be on a grand scale that could be hundreds of thousands of ounces that could be you know depending on how big your portfolio is so this one how much silver should i own have you ever thought about buying silver maybe you've gone through coin stores or visit post office and wondered if you should buy some coins maybe instead you have concerns over the macroeconomic landscape is silver a good hedge against inflation Yes, we all know that question, so let's go into the meat and potatoes. How much silver should I own outside of inflationary risk? If you do not think inflation rates are going up over the coming years, what then? Well, many people see inherent risk for fiat currencies, simply put. If governments keep printing money, countries could end up declaring bankruptcy and issuing new currencies. In some ways, this is much like mega inflation. See... A lot of some of these don't answer the question, and that's why I wanted to pick six or seven different ones because sometimes these these uh, these articles kind of just beat around the bush and don't give numbers like people want to hear. Uh, so this one case point is a strategy of owning five percent of your portfolio in gold and silver. Whenever the price goes up, for example, seven percent, you readjust by taking money out, and then you put that money into other investment. I don't recommend this. I'm just going to skip this article because that is. That is 5% is extremely low in my opinion, and I would love for you guys to, uh, to chime in, throw your two cents out there, your opinions on what you think about some of these, these, these recommendations as well. What do you think is a good percentage? So how much gold and silver should I own? This is another. This is the third article. The question about how much gold and silver should be a part of a portfolio has dogged investors for more than a century. After all, there are no greater stores of actual value than precious metals like gold and silver. And that's what I was talking about. There's no, there, there's no better option. So if that's the case, then why would you only own 5% of something that is your best option? It doesn't make sense. Um, so I like how they say this. However, the true answer to the question is as personal as they come, right? Every investor has their own goals, their own tolerance for risk, their own perception of political and geopolitical status of the economy, and their own opinions about long-term viability of fiat currency. That's, that's, exactly, that's exactly the point. Um, so let's look at um, how much you should own. Here we go. What percentage of my portfolio should be precious metals? Um and I like how they reiterate that, you know, that we're not financial advisors by any means, you know, same here, you know, uh, I'm just someone who likes sharing my experience silver stacking and I like teaching people the different options and that's why I try to speak from a very universal perspective. I can't tell you what to do because I don't know your situation. I don't know how long you've been stacking. I don't know how much silver you have. I don't know you know, how much you can buy on a monthly basis. I don't know when you plan on selling. So th the point of these videos are for you to reflect upon yourself and answer these questions. I'm just bringing the question to the table. And then you can learn from other people in the comment section who also have good points. And it's a conversation that starts and this is a community. Um, so I like how they ask a few questions. Is my portfolio diversified already or does it need some different elements? Am I concerned about accessing the cash value of precious metal investment? Do I have a safe place to store my metals? How concerned am I about the stability of the world economy? How tolerant of risk and volatility am I? Most importantly, you need a to have a firm and clear decisive answer to this question, why am I buying gold and silver? That is a very good question. If you don't know the why, then you're more susceptible to panic selling because you don't understand silver's true value. If you're just buying it because your friend told you to or you just hopped on the hype bandwagon, 
then if silver starts performing poorly, you're more susceptible of giving up or you have a weaker hand. If you're someone who understands silver's true value, even if silver goes down to $11 like it did in March of 2020, you're still going to hold on because you understand silver's much more valuable than this and you're not worried at all. If anything, you're celebrating because you get silver at an extremely cheap price. Most people buy high and sell low. It's supposed to be buy low and sell high. Why is that though? Why do people do the exact opposite? And that's because one, it's just psychology. You know, people need validation. And if the, if the statistics on the screen are invalidating them, they get worried. But you got to invest with your head, not your heart. It doesn't matter what you feel because your feelings can be irrational, especially in times of, 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 you know, of craziness that's going on over the past several years of how crazy the world's going to be. The world's been, of course, you're going to, there's going to be high emotions and a lot of irrational decision making like impulse buying or panic selling can kick in. So I say invest with your head, not your heart. Um, so let's move on to this fourth one. This is coming from a prepper. So this is a good, this is a, a really good switch up because preppers have a different perspective since they're not looking at a portfolio with stocks and stuff. They're prepping for the physical, for trading and bartering compared to more of a stock person. So this will be a little bit of an interesting approach and I'm sure it's going to have a different answer than the previous three. How much silver should a prepper have? As preppers, we stack our odds against the future. We store food for lean items or lean times. We invest in various security items, but how many of us secure our financial standing? Various financial wizards recommend having six months of expenses, which is rent, mortgage, food, and other bills in accessible funds. Others recommend having 30 days of cash on hand and instantly accessible. See, this is some real stuff that we need to think about the other stuff the five percent without giving any explanation really that's nice to know but this is some good stuff right here six months of expenses and then 30 days of cash on hand as well i like that i like that what do you guys think about that how much silver should you store your money as is your time is precious and deserves to be spent wisely when determining the answer that best fits your need, look at your available cash as well as your other prepping requirements for a balanced answer. Start with five to 10 ounces for your first purchase, then build monthly whatever your budget allows. As you increase your holdings, your goal should be one month of expenses, then expand this to three months. I like how they're giving actual ounces, actual percentages, actual information instead of just a very lightweight, safe way to put it. Ultimately, you want 10 to 25% of your assets in precious metals. When investing in any significant amount of your savings, always consult with a financial planner. Well, it depends who that financial planner is. You know, uh, when I went to the bank one time, they told me that I shouldn't invest in any precious metals or, or, or push it through the SLV or the COMEX. And I was like, you know what? Um, I'll talk to you guys later. I appreciate the advice, but, but I, I got to go. <laughs> Silver being inexpensive when compared to gold has the advantage of being available in several forms. From legal tender to private mints, there is a coin for you. I'm not going to go over legal tender and private mints. All Most of you guys know what that is. And if you don't, check out some other of, you know, um, let's we'll check out some of my other videos or Google bully inverse numismatics i'm sure some of my videos will be up on the first page of youtube if you did that anyways um but how many ounces of silver should you own that's the million dollar question there's always a place for a little silver in your savings start small and set aside a little money each month and that reminded me of um the name of the video or the podcast that i was on with robert kiyosaki the uh, the famous author that wrote the book Rich Dad Poor Dad. I was a special guest on his podcast, um, probably like seven eight months ago, and um, he named that podcast the number one asset that everyone can afford. 
I thought that was a really cool title, especially since I, that w- I was the, the the guest for that you know for that episode, and that podcast has over three million subscribers. Go check it out, by the way. It has like seven hundred thousand views, and um, it was really cool to be able to throw my take on silver in front of such a large audience. And I had so many emails, so many. I still get some till till this day of people saying, "Hey, I saw you on." the rich dad podcast how do you start investing in the silver or what's the best way to you know so that was a great opportunity to you know invite silver into people's lives so i like how they say work your way up your rent mortgage or uh, up to uh, be able to afford one month and then go to three months Don't stop there and stack your ASCs, bars, junk, silver, and gold to three months of expenses. I don't recommend going over 10% of your total assets as precious metals without uh, consultation with a trusted financial planner. Um, At that level, either you are seriously hedging your bet against the downfall of the economy or you no longer have faith in traditional investments like stock markets. And that is true. Um, That is definitely true. If you're someone that doesn't trust the economy or realizes that the dollar's lost 98% of its purchasing power and we're $32 trillion in debt, then, you you know, why not? Um, and this is kind of like what I answered uh, in that comment where the guy said, I have 600 ounces, is that enough? If you have a means to stack more, make sure you have it in a safe place. We're beyond the realm of mattress money now. Yeah, I mean, you can't fit 600 ounces of silver in a mattress. But if you do have enough to keep moving on, why stop? What is the best one ounce silver coin to buy? Um, that's, that's, we're not gonna go into that. So let's go into the next one. This says five to 10%. I'm not even gonna go in. So a lot of, a lot of, um, People are saying 5 to 10%. What do you think about that? So here's how much gold and silver you need for a crisis. Um, imagine the sick feeling in your gut if we get to the next financial crisis and you suddenly realize you didn't buy enough bullion to get through it. For this reason alone, it's worth thinking about how many ounces you might need. And that is so important. Think about that. And that's why I always talk about being prepared This is a silver stacking strategy. We're strategizing. We're not aimlessly buying silver, throwing it at the wall and hoping it sticks. That's gambling. Gamblers do that. They throw money at the wall, hope it sticks with the odds highly against them. Investors tweak those odds in our favor by looking at information and comparing that information on what makes the most sense. And silver does. And that's exactly why we're more likely to become successful compared to someone who plays scratch offs, you know, or the Powerball. Because, you know, that's that 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 is so pointless. Every time I go to the gas station, I see people doing that. I'm just like, man, like they could be investing that money. You know, it's it's sad, kind of. Um, but anyways, uh, this is interesting. This chart, I like this chart, actually. So, they they make a table for gold and silver. If you have $500 of monthly expenses, and let's say that's 25 ounces per month, Six months, you need 150 ounces. For one year, you need 300 ounces. All the way to five years, 1,500. So it shows you exactly where you're at. If you have $20,000 of expenses each month, then you need 1,000 ounces. Six months, 6,000 ounces. In a year, you would need 12,000 ounces to cover you if your expenses are 20,000. And that's based on $20 silver price. So, you know, you can equate the math. But this is a great table to use. I really, really, really think you guys should use something like this, especially if you're uh, someone who is preparing more of like during a crisis, right? It says ounces of silver to meet expenses during a crisis. I like how they did the math. And that kind of puts us to this next or the last the seventh article, or this is a subreddit, 
Um, it's Mike Maloney's letter to Elon Musk titled Buy Physical Silver. Check this out, folks. This is an extremely interesting letter to Elon, and Elon actually responded and said, thanks. We know Elon is buying a silver mine. He needs a direct source, and that is exactly what Mike Maloney suggested here. Check this out. Mike Maloney just did a big interview praising his Tesla, and all of a sudden Elon Musk publicly thanked Mike. So Mike spent or sent an open letter to Musk urging him to buy silver bullion, stating, You said that Tesla plans to sell 20 million EVs by 2030. The company produced 430,400 units over the past four quarters, so that would mean that, that would be 19,569,000 more vehicles within nine years. Each EV uses up to 50 grams of silver, which totals to 978.4 million grams. In other words, if you reach your 2030 sales goal, Tesla will need up to 31.45 million ounces of silver per year. The cost at $25 is 786.25 million. But the cost, if, if you wait in silver $50, is 1.57 billion. And at $100, it's a whopping $3.145 billion. And that's just your automobile, uh, automobile business. That's not SpaceX. That's not Solar City either. You see why someone like Musk needs to be buying silver now and having a direct source so you, so you can cut out the premiums and stuff. And that's why Musk bought a silver mine. Or he almost, I, I don't know if he did it yet, but he's mentioned it. Um, so... We don't have to put ourselves on the grand scale of Elon Musk, but just think of this. And, and Elon's just the mascot. Think of every business that, I, I mean, Apple, any business that is, that is industrial or, or has, that, are, that creates technology, every single one is going to have this problem if they're not accumulating it now. I mean, think about that. Think about those numbers. 31 million so he could seven hundred and eighty six million dollars compared to three point one four billion, and that's just Tesla. That's important. I mean, that could be a game changer, um, especially if silver gets harder to accumulate, which is also a very important thing to take note of. Um, so if you wanted a direct source, then hit up Miles Franklin, send an email to info at milesfranklin.com. Andy Sheckman is a CEO. He will be able to get silver when others can't. He filled that $50 million order in two days. Nobody else in this world could fill an order that big. And that's why that billionaire from Texas chose Andy. And it actually happened twice. Over 900,000 eagles, over 100,000 ounces in junk, which is in junk silver or constitutional silver, which is insane to think about. Over 100,000 ounces in con He pulled that off. And gold. Nobody else in this world could pull that off. Andy has the connections that nobody else does, and that's his company, is Miles Franklin. Very respected, been in business for over 45 years. And the best part about that is, if something were to happen, like let's say you bought something, something happened, all you got to do is email me, and I can put you in direct contact with Andy. I could call him up, right? I texted him 15 minutes ago on my phone. I could literally just call them on my cell phone and say, hey, Andy, I got an email of this person. I could say your name and say, that, you know, this is their order. This is, and Andy will fix it. That's why they've had zero negative complaints because, yes, they might mess up, but Andy always makes sure it's right. And if you've ever seen him on my channel, you know that's the truth because he is the most genuine, wholesome guy I've ever met. Um, you know, he such a good guy. So make sure you let him know Silver Slayer sent you because Andy loves when you guys come from my channel. We have a weekly podcast called the Silver Stacking Podcast. Uh, we'll probably be doing the, shooting the next episode on Wednesday or possibly tomorrow. Wednesday or Thursday by the latest. Andy's a very busy guy. He's always traveling. But definitely have an episode out by Thursday or Friday. So stay tuned for that as well. I'm also doing a huge giveaway. Giving away an entire tube of sealed eagles and 10 ounces of semi numismatic high premium silver. I mean, we're, we're talking about a lot of silver being given away. And um, I, I hope you guys enjoy and made luckiest stacker win. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Make sure you answer these questions. How much silver is enough and do you have enough? What is enough? 
And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. This was Silver Slayer. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.